This past November, Secretary Mayorkas told me in a hearing on the Homeland Security Committee that he believes our southern border is secure. I've been to the border multiple times, and I can tell you that the Secretary's claim could not be farther from the truth. Over one million illegal immigrants have already crossed our southern border this fiscal year, and we are only five months in. This worsening national security and humanitarian crisis is unsustainable. A country that can't secure its borders is not a country at all. Mexican cartels and other criminal organizations are taking advantage of President Biden's lack of action. Record amounts of fentanyl is being smuggled across our wide open border and into our communities. Roughly 300 Americans are dying every day of fentanyl overdoses. That's one death every eight and a half minutes. This deadly drug is killing more young adults than car crashes and suicides. My home state continues to be impacted by, fentanyl, by the fentanyl epidemic. Over the past few years, Kansas has seen a 73% increase in fentanyl-related overdoses, one of the highest increases in America. Earlier this year in January, a 15-year-old freshman at Lansing High School named Nicholas Cruz Burris acquired what he thought was a Percocet pill from a drug dealer soliciting him over Snapchat. The next morning, his mother, Rhonda, went to wake him for school, only to find him dead in his bed. This is a picture of Nicholas, 15 years old, and this is happening to young people all across this country. The time for action was yesterday. Our federal government is failing at a core constitutional duty enforcing commonplace border security and safeguarding our citizens. We can and must do better, and families like that of Nicholas Burris demand it of us. Mr. Sabatino, would you agree that the vast majority of fentanyl coming into this country is being made by precursor chemicals, primarily from China, manufactured by drug cartels in Mexico, and then smuggled into the United States, both through and in between ports of entry? Uh, that is what we see with uh, about 84 percent interdicted uh, at ports of entry. Fentanyl has sadly become the leading cause of death for Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Last year, Customs and Border, Control, Border Patrol seized approximately 14,700 pounds of fentanyl. The DEA considers just two milligrams of fentanyl to be potentially a lethal dose. So the work of your agency has likely prevented millions of deaths. I commend you for your collective efforts, but as we've seen, despite the valiant work of CBP, the drug is still flowing into our country. Of the force multipliers at CBP's disposal, is there one you find most effective at combating fentanyl explicitly? Again, we, we have to leverage integrated tools, uh, but our, part, uh, our partnerships and the collaborative approaches uh, to identifying these illicit supply chains is critical. We, we can't wait for these things to come to our ports of entry. We're not gonna seize our way out. Uh, you know, of, uh, you know, interdicting uh, narcotics. We, we have to develop those partnerships. And again, going back to the great partnership we have with Homeland Security Investigations, and again, uh, establishing a cell to focus on all things fentanyl uh, is a priority for us. Mr. Salisbury, can you please elaborate upon how Homeland Security Investigations acts in concert with Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, factions within the DOG, DOJ and FBI? Yes, thank you for that question. So HSI, as the largest investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security, um, partners with the JTF, uh, our, partners with the FBI and the JTTF, the Joint Terrorism Task Force. We are currently, next to the FBI, the largest um, participating member on the JTTFs of criminal investigators. So we, we, we um, supply information, we utilize our authorities in support of national security investigations to the JTTF, working in concert every day with DOJ and uh, the other partnerships on the JTTF. It's been reported that in 2021, 86% of the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force disruptions of terrorist activity were achieved with significant HSI involvement. Can you describe what significant HSI involvement means? Yeah, so going back to HSI's uh, unique authorities and investigative skill sets, um, you may have national security risks, um, but it may be not be able to be proved. Um, a lot of national security risks may be involved in uh, counterproliferation investigations, export violations, uh, money laundering, all of which HSI excels at. So HSI will employ every um, investigative priority under its, under its um, mandate to explore all these criminal organizations and take them apart for whatever criminal activities they may be uh, currently proceeding with.
Again, thank you both for being here. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Okay.